And as you read the title above, this is a foundation, highlight, contour, bronze, all of that good stuff tutorial. I do have a video on my channel with me already doing this. It's almost at a million views, which is crazy, but it's pretty old and it's, my foundation has been updated and yeah, I just want to make this video because personally it's 2018 and I'm just a little tired of seeing um, chocolate girls with too light this and cakey this and we just gonna have to leave that in the past. So this is what this video is here for, to help you all, because I would like to be a resource. Also, my cousin's here. Hey. <laughs> all right, so first thing first, skin is essential, especially when it comes to um, your makeup. So if your skin is like dehydrated, if you got flaky ass skin, you need to exfoliate your skin. Um, if your skin is flaky or if it's dry, you need to drink some more water, because if you're putting makeup on top of skin that doesn't look good, that looks bad. So um, I, my face is already washed. I did not put, I'm doing my skin prep now. So I washed my face with my um, Sonic Mia 2, the Clarisonic, um, and some Bosha like cleanser. And then now I'm about to just spray my face with this Pixie Glow Mist to get my skin hydrated um, for my foundation. All right, so now to seal in all that moisture, I'm gonna just take some rose hip oil and I'm just gonna place that all over my face. Alrighty guys, so I personally use two different types of primers. So priming is the first step before you put on your foundation. So think of it like if you're gonna paint walls in a house. You put on primer because it basically is the base for that new paint. So your primer is the, paste, the, the base for your foundation and it's basically going to allow your foundation to last longer and just honestly have something to stick to rather than just your bare skin. So because I have combination skin, I get oily right here. Um, I kind of crease right here, but everything else is pretty um, natural or normal everywhere else. I like to take a silicone based primer which pretty much is um, it kind of like controls oils from the face I like to place that on my nose and then I like to use a just a um, moisturizing type of primer everywhere else so I'm gonna be taking my Smashbox photo finish primer and I'm gonna be applying that mostly to my nose area and then I'm gonna take the Fenty Beauty um, soft filter y'all know this this primer I'm gonna place that on the perimeter of my face Alrighty, so now that my skin is primed, um, this stop, this step is definitely optional, but like I said, I am an oily girl, so um, I like to ensure that my oils, like, it's, I, I'm there, you know, I wanna make sure I take any steps necessary to make sure that they don't shine through. So I'm just taking a little bit of my Laura Mercier translucent powder in um, medium deep. I'm gonna put that on a beauty sponge, and I'm gonna pretty much soak up some of the powder, blow away the excess, and really push it into um, the places that I get oily, as well as the place that I get like small wrinkle lines. Alrighty, so now it is foundation time. So today I'm gonna to be using the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation in the shade um, New Caledonia. So it's D2. Um, when picking foundations, a lot of times your winter shade and your um, summer shade are two different shades. But I like to show people like if you're gonna pick a foundation, like don't you know, kind of avoid swatching from your hand because usually your hands um, is not necessarily the same shade as your face. So it's important that when you pick your foundation, I learned this little hack from Jackie Ina. Um, kind of like swatch it on your um, collarbone. So you just want to make sure like when you're wearing foundation that that's your color. So I just put the foundation on my collarbone, as you can see, and it's basically my color. I don't know, my undershades or my um, my undertones are just different, <laughs> so all over my body, but this is my shade of foundation. So I like to just shake up my foundation and just place it all over the face. And I'm just gonna take this brush from Luxie. Um, it's a flat top kabuki brush, and I'm just going to begin to um, to work this into the skin. So when you blend out your foundation, 
you always want to make sure you blend down and you also want to make sure that you are blending to your neck because you don't want like a line of demarcation where it's like oh this is my face shade and then like your face and your neck are two different colors or, or your face yeah your face and your neck are two different colors and you also want to make sure that you push your foundation into your hairline Alrighty, now to soak up any excess foundation, I love going in with the um, flat end of my beauty blender and really just going in and like just so soaking up any ex excess foundation. And it honestly helps to like blend out the foundation as well. All right, so now it's time to do the part that everybody loves to do, but y'all gotta make sure y'all do it the right way to avoid looking crazy. So it's the highlight and contour part. So for me, I love to use a um, concealer that's about um, one to two shades lighter than my skin tone. Um, so first I'm gonna take, some people say they don't like it, but I do, I, I like this step a lot. I'm gonna take the Fenty Beauty um, Matchstick and Suede, and then I'm also gonna go on top of that with my LA Girl Pro Concealer. For me, I like my highlight and contour to be extremely natural, extremely neutral. I don't like it to be so bright and super focused um, on the under eye because that can become to like just be distracting. So I like to go in, um, like suede is this color. And you see how like far from my um, skin tone, it's not that far. And then the LA Girl Pro Concealer is um, this color. So they're not like super, super two different colors. I like to keep it very, very like natural and similar to my skin tone. I like to just put my concealer right here. Um, if you start bringing it over here, it kind of widens your face and stretches out your face. So I just like to focus it more so under the under the eye. I don't necessarily highlight my nose. I do bring attention to my forehead just a little bit. There's also this trick that you can do to avoid kind of like contouring your nose. It's like reverse contour to your nose. If you bring the concealer on your nose, like how I'm doing it right here, it pretty much naturally slims down your nose. So like if the concealer is right here on this part of your nose, you see how it basically looks like it's making my nose smaller. Boom. Alright, so now I'm going to take a little bit of my LA Girl Pro Concealer and put that same place where I put the rest of the concealer. And they're pretty much the same. I just like to use the LA Girl Pro Concealer because um, it just helps like blend out this matchstick a little bit more. Alrighty, so now I'm going to take the pointy end of my beauty sponge. You want to make sure that when you're using a sponge of any kind, it can be real technique, it can be a beauty blender, that is damp. Not soaking wet to where the point that water is seeping out of it, but that is damp enough to make sure that your product is blending. So I just like to just begin blending and just go, you know, go until you feel like it's seamless. And you see how with a, um, a shade that's close to my natural skin color, that it pretty much blends into the foundation. If it was this was a super, super light shade, I would be blending, trying to make it work. But if you use like shades that are closer to your skin tone, like I said, one to two shades lighter than your skin tone, it's not gonna make blending a hassle and it's gonna just look seamless on your skin. And you want to turn around your beauty blender because you use the beauty blender to blend out your foundation. So you want to kind of use the other side um, to blend out the, the concealer so it's not harsh. Like when it's ending, you want to make sure that it's a seamless um, blend. So you want to use the side where there's like a little bit of leftover foundation to blend off those edges. See how seamless that looks underneath the eye? Boom.
Alrighty, so then I like to go in with my contour shade. I'm not a super contour fanatic, but I do like to make sure that I contour like my cheekbones just so I can have a more chiseled look. So I'm taking the Match 6 by Fenty Beauty in the shade Espresso, and I'm just going to put some on my forehead. If you have a larger forehead, you're more prone to like be contouring your forehead a little bit much. But basically, contour is pretty much slimming out your face and pretty much bringing back dimension to your um, to the areas and face that you really want to be prominent. When you put on foundation, it kind of like flattens out your face. So basically, contour is just bringing it back together. So it's kind of like working with shadows, essentially. So for me, I just like to make sure that I place my um, contour on my cheekbone. And you don't want to go ham. And then you don't also, with your contour shades, you don't want to be going to a point where it's like ashy black. Or it's like too too dark, so like people, it can they can really see like wow, like you contoured, like it's super dark or like drag queen type dark. You don't want it to look like that. You just want it to be basically you want everything to be seamless when you're doing your your foundation. So my contour shade is maybe about two to two, one to two to three, almost three. Don't you don't want to push three, but one to two shades darker than my actual skin tone. You don't want to make it super super dark, and also you want to pay attention to um to tones when you are doing um your contour because me. My undertones are more so cool, but I like to do warm, warmer contour shades because my skin is so cool. Like if I do a, a cool shade where it's almost like the, the contour is like grayish, then it's pretty much going to, my skin is going to look muddy. So I like to use something like this espresso, the stick, it has um, pretty much like red undertones. I like that because it brings a warmth back to my face, especially because of the bronzer that I love to pair it with. It makes my face look so warm. So yeah, I just want to focus my contour here. In my cheekbones, a little bit on my forehead. And sometimes under here, if I'm feeling sexy. I'm feeling sexy today. Alright, so first I like to go in with a stippling brush and kind of blend out everything. And when you blend out your contour, you pretty much want to blend it upward. So you're blending it into the... Um, well, when you're doing right here, you want to blend it upward. So you're basically blending it into the concealer. All right, so now I'm gonna follow up with this beauty blender and pretty much blend it out some more so that everything is super, super, super seamless. You don't want any lines of demarcation when it comes to any layers of your foundation. All righty, so now everybody's, I feel like their favorite part is the baking part. So in my older tutorial, I baked and my skin had this low key, like ashy little, little cast to it that I mean it was decent because of the powder that I was using like it was fairly close enough to my skin shade but since then I used to use Sasha Buttercup um every time I would do this routine but I recently um came across this the Laura Mercier um the the, the translucent powder some brown girls use it in the the white one that she has I'm sorry you can't you will not catch me using a white based translucent powder I used to think I could wear airspun I would never do that again <laughs> I like to keep it um I, my colors well my 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 translucent powder is close to my skin because like I said I just want everything to be seamless I want everything to be natural I want everything to really flow on my face so I like to use the Laura Mercy A um in me medium deep but they also have um a f there's a company called Dermablend they have one in the shade Saffron I'll leave it in the description box um it pretty much gets the job done it has a little bit more orange undertones in it um but I prefer this um I'm not saying I'm opposed to sh to um to the Sasha Buttercup, but it's super, super yellow, and it can go really left. With this, it really, if you're my shade or a little bit lighter than my shade or even a little bit darker than my shade, I really feels like this one really gets the job done. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take your beauty sponge, you're going to dip it in the air, and you're gonna blow away the excess powder okay because you don't want hella powder just sitting on your face and this part is super important because if not like your foundation like it can it can get cakey really quick so basically instead of just like lightly putting it on the skin you really want to push the the sponge and the powder into the skin so that it can really settle and they can be you know like they can low-key like get married so like basically like just look 
You see how that looks? Uh, so it's like in my skin, opposed to if I was just to go like this. I'm picking up some more powder. It's like that's sitting on top of my skin and this is like really in the skin. So that's basically what you want to do when you do your, um, your highlight and contour or your baking. We're not baking anymore because we really want to make sure that it's one with our skin. And also with your powder, powder you want to make sure that you, um, when it comes to the nose, you put it right here. So we can do our reverse contour on our nose. And basically, you just want to put this powder everywhere that you put your concealer, your lighter shade concealer. Alrighty, so now it's basically time to clean up our contour or honestly provide you with guidelines as to where you're going to set your contour. So with every liquid that you do or every cream that you want to do, you want to make sure that you are setting it with the powder. So just like I set my concealer with the powder, next we're going to follow up and set and set and bronze our contour um, with some powders. So basically, you're going to take that same brush or beauty blender. And this time, instead of like sitting and put like pushing it into the skin, we're kind of like low key gonna let it sit on the skin because it's um pretty much gonna like uh, provide our contour with a very chiseled um look and just like a guide to where we want to put it. So you take your powder, and this time we're not gonna blow off the excess. We're just gonna go in very finely. You're gonna squeeze your your um your beauty blender like this, and you're gonna start by your ear. So when you do this, you want to go like this underneath the contour. And pretty much provide a line to where you're going to be cleaning up your contour. Alrighty, so now to set our contour, I'm just going to be taking this um, this darker powder. It's from um, Ruby Kisses. It's their mineral powder in the shade Ebony. You're going to take a angled brush and you're pretty much going to dig into your powder and always knock off the excess. With your, your um, shade, this is a little bit cooler, but I like it because it kind of offsets how red um, that that contour stick I used, but I'm also going to follow that up with the bronzer. But I just want to make sure that my contour, is, it says, hey, I'm a contour, not like super red, but I just definitely want to make sure I set it. And make sure you hold your brush and you start towards the end and bring in like, kind of do the circular motions and bring it towards the end. So when it comes to your nose, if you do want to contour, you want to make sure that you're going in with a smaller brush. So I'm going in with this brush like this here, dipping in a little bit into the contour shade. Knock, always knock off the excess powder. And you want to start from like kind of where your brow starts. And you want to go in very lightly and only do like the outsides of the nose. So remember to start kind of where your brow is and go on with the light hand. Okay, so now I'm taking my favorite bronzers, the CoverGirl Queen Collection Bronzer in Ebony Bronze, I believe. And you can find this at your local beauty supply store. It's so beautiful. It's so warm. It's so like rich. It's just everything in a bronzer. Love it for, you know, brown girls. So basically you're doing the same thing. And bronzing your skin is just basically bringing back warmth to the skin. So I'm placing that everywhere I, I contoured except for on my nose.
Alrighty, so now it's time to basically wipe off all this excess powder and set our entire face. So to set our face, well to set my face, I'm going to be taking the Sephora Matte Perfect Perfection Powder Foundation in the shade 68 Deep Mocha, taking this nice fluffy brush and I'm pretty much going to just be applying this all over my face, wiping off all this excess powder. You really want to make sure you wipe under this this part under here because you do not want that to look like a line of demarcation that's not sexy And just for personal satisfaction, I like to go back in a little bit with my bronzer and bronze up my face just a little bit more. All right, so this next step is about to act for two reasons. So pretty much, you see my face, it looks good. You know, it looks nice. Everything is blended out. Oh. If you need to, like I said, make sure that line of demarcation underneath your contour is not super, super prominent, but it's like, you know, it's there. So I look like milk chocolate right now. But basically, my face kind of has this dry-ish cast. Not necessarily the most dry-ish because all of the powders that I pretty much used were really good powders and they blend well with each other. However, it can sometimes look dry and everybody, you know, you just want to make sure your face is, is natural looking and it has this nice little dew to it. That's me personally. I like to be matte, but I also like to make my skin look skin-like. So pretty much I'm going to take that um, Pixi Glow Mist um, spray that I used earlier to pretty much break that cast of dryness. Also, this is going to allow my um, highlight, which is the next step, to have something to really pop to and stick to. I like to apply my highlighter on skin when it's almost dry, but it still has a little bit of wet. Like you don't want to do it when it's to the point where your skin is drenched because then it's going to like, it's going to pretty much move. If that makes sense. Like if you apply it when your skin is too, too wet, it's going to move it. But you want to make sure your skin is like almost dry, but it has a little dampness to it. So we're going to be using this spray. You can use any spray. You can use Fix Plus. You just want to make sure you're using like a spray that pretty much like says it's going to bring your skin back to life, revive the skin. Um, but yeah, it's going to help with the dry cast and as well as give your highlighter something to stick to. Alrighty, so now I'm taking my Maybelline Master Chrome um, highlighter. This is a fairly inexpensive highlighter that I really like because it is so pretty. It looks good on any skin shade. And it's like seven bucks. Like, it's super popping. I love it. You can find it at your local Walmart. And I'm taking a brush like this. You can use this type of brush. I'm, I usually mix between this type of brush and a fan brush. But I like to go in. I don't really want to OD on my highlighter. So I like to go in. And with any powders that I do use, when it comes to my face, I always knock off the excess powder. Because you don't want your face to be super, like, too much. So you just want to apply your highlight in circular motions to the high points of your face. And you see how my skin is not super wet, but it definitely has a little, a little dew to it. Just a little bit right here because it really brings like light to your face so you see how like it's light is bouncing off of these areas so even with that little bit of highlighter there I want to make sure I kind of like brush it out brush out the excess just so it goes into the skin nice and natural so like I was talking about um, my fan brush, I'm just going to go in with my fan brush to intensify the highlighter just a little bit. All right, and to make everything pretty much seamless on the face and bring a little bit of color, I like to use my um, MAC bl blush in the shade Raisin to just blend out my blush as well. No, to blend out the highlighter 
and just make that that transition a little bit more seamless and just to bring some color back to my face so knock off the excess and really cheese when you put your blush on and pretty much apply it to the apples of your cheeks And this blush is not super pigmented, so I'm able to go into a light with a light hand. But if your blush is a little bit more bright, you might not want to post. I mean, apply that much blush. You might just want to go in like simple-handed. But like this blush really just blends into the skin, so I'm able to kind of go in with a heavier hand. All right, so now to set my entire face, um, I just started recently using this, but I absolutely love it. It's the Bosha White Charcoal Mattifying Makeup Setting Spray. I um, used to use the Scandinavia to set my entire face, but I really like this one because it keeps me matte and it keeps my skin looking bomb all day long and I've used this on clients um, for people you know I've done their foundation and they went like outside for graduation and their face looked great the entire day and even my face looks really good all the day so I like to use this spray um, you can get it at Sephora if not I would just definitely highly suggest buying a mattifying spray especially if you are an oily girl but if you're not super oily if you have normal to dry skin I would definitely find a, a hydrating um, setting spray so yeah I'm just gonna spray this all over my face Alright guys, so now this is the completed look. I did um, go in with just a little bit more highlighter to make it a little bit more intense. But for me, this is a this is my highlight that says I'm a highlighter, but it's not like boom, like super chalky. In the past, like my highlighter used to take up all of my face. But since I've been able to like grow and enhance my skills, I realized like that's not the way to go. So the last step I want you all to take is um, making sure that your foundation has no flashback. Um, sometimes that, you know, we, we go out places and that's why I said it's the importance of you blending your foundation foundation to your neck blend it into your hairline and you're using shades that really are your skin shade because say you go out to eat with your girlfriends you go to the club you go to a party it's dark and they take a picture of you and now you look like Michael Jackson um like a, it's, you just don't want that you don't want the pictures to look crazy um because you're gonna like low-key be embarrassed and I don't want y'all to be embarrassed because y'all are beautiful people so basically I want you to take your phone I want you to turn your flash on and I want you to take a picture of your foundation before you leave your house to make sure that if there's anything that you need to blend if anything's not working um you can fix it before you leave and nobody else has to tell you you already know so just bloop And everything looks super seamless and beautiful so I hope that this video was helpful if you use you know utilize any of my tips um, and I'll have all of the products in the description box below just let me know if you liked anything thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one